Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was a good one. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming on this evening. We we love you. We adore you. Uh, Melissa, go ahead and kick us off in prayer. Thank you, everyone, for coming on this evening. We adore you. Let's go ahead and kick us off in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, God, for a beautiful day today. The, today is the best day ever, starting yeah. yesterday. Okay. And uh, I'm sure everyone is having the same uh, day as I'm having. And uh, we send our love to the um, to the homeless, the orphan, uh, the widow, the shut in, um, the people who are left behind, and um, to the sick and to the poor. Um, and we are uh, looking forward uh, to learn more today. Uh, let's open up our heart and our mind to receive it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. What a great prayer. You're getting good at this. Amen. Man. <laughs> All right. She's putting y'all on notice. Y'all better step y'all game up. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a great prayer. All right. Praise report, testimonies, by the ways. I know Melissa is excited. She had a great day, so We'll, we'll piggyback on hers. I also had a great day. Very awesome day. Anyone else had a great day? If you're still breathing, you had a great day. <laughs> yes, Lily. Yeah, we, we had a great day out today uh, shopping. Yeah. And uh, before we came back, uh, Adrian told us that he received a grant for his firefighting cost. So it looks like his cost is free. Zero dollar. Zero dollar to us. Zero dollar. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember two weeks ago when I yes. told Adrian about his, and I didn't go into depth, do y'all remember that? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what we were talking about. Talking about. Yes. yes. Good for him, he created that. Mm -hmm. He is such a great creator. Good for him. Anyone else got a praise report testimony? We all good? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We're on page 803. And I think this is the last lesson before we go into our miracle course. Yay! <laughs> You know how long it took us Yay. to get through this? This took almost a year and a half, two years for us to get through this, I believe. Mm -hmm. Quite a long time. So I applaud you. I might add one more to this, but Father hasn't decided. He hasn't given it to me yet. So we're still waiting. If so, then we'll do it next week. If not, then we'll jump into the miracles, which I'm really excited about because you all are already practicing it right now, and you're really, really good at it. So this is going to get a more in-depthness of what you've already learned. Fair enough? Yes? All right. Yes. 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 So let's get started. Page 803. The title tonight is You Only Experience What You Have Chosen to Create. Now... Some of you have created some things you just didn't want or didn't like. Agreed? Yeah. <laughs> Out of fairness? <laughs> fairness? And we want to clarify the how and the who and the why and the what portion of why it all transferred and how it was there to really benefit you. Does that make sense? So as we left from yesterday from the sponsoring thought, this is kind of a, a, a lead into that from the first sponsoring thought creates your experience. Do you all remember that? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. Okay. So question yes. number one, how do you create your experience? <laughs> oh, I love it. 
How do you create, it's a very, and you have to think about, I want you to think about this very, very carefully in terms of how you live your life, your daily routine, your rituals, if you will. So when we ask this question, it is from the time you open your eyeballs up and come back into the world and then go through the course of the day and then go back into the evening or your sleep stage. Make sense? How does it all transfer? Mm -hmm. Interesting question. Have anyone thought about that before? Yes, no, maybe so? Mm -hmm. We never thought about it, we just do. We just do, but now we want you to be yeah. conscious because think about how many times you have heard someone say, I woke up on the wrong side of the what? Yep. Bed. Bed. Yep. <laughs> or they made another statement that sounded something like this. I'm having a horrible day or a bad day, or this is the worst day ever. What did they wake up with? What did they wake up with the first sponsoring thought and created? So first it started off with, I'm having a bad day. Instead of giving glory to God and thanking him for the day that he has given you to do what? Create a new, to either choose love or choose fear because those are really your only two choices in which you create your experience. So as you create your experience, it's only out of those two places of love and fear. That makes sense? So yeah. what we want you to do is be mindful. So one of the ways that we um, shared with you was the affirmation that we wake up in the morning and say, does everyone remember? I come into this day, how? In love with love, by love. All right, come on, man. I love you. See that? And when you talk about love, who are you talking about? God. God. Because God is what? Love. love. And God is what? Light. God is love and God is light. I can not take you up. Make sense? So now you understand how you created your experience as you go forth through your day. Does that make sense? So, as you begin to pray throughout your day, as you start your daily prayer, be mindful of what your first sponsoring thought is before your feet hit the ground. Does that make sense? And often, here's what happens. Most time, people carry baggage into their sleep state, and we've all had it where how many of you have wrestled in your sleep, tossed and turned? Every last one of you. <laughs> Every last one of you has had a yeah. restless night of sleep. <laughs> yes, one time or another. Exactly. Where there was a too hot, too cold, or you was in so much pain that you couldn't sleep. Yes. Or you was yeah. worried about something so much that you couldn't sleep. Yeah. So now look at what you created within that experience because that's how you lived out your day based on that first sponsoring thought of how did I wake up this morning? Did I wake up glorify God or did I wake up thinking about this bill? Did I wake up thinking about this man? Did I wake up thinking about this child? Did I wake up thinking about this house? Did I wake up thinking about everything that does not serve me? Does that make sense? Yes. Instead of grounding myself into the day that the Lord has made and to rejoice how? In it. Okay? So now, and, all, and let me say this out of fairness. You all are really, 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 really good at creating how your day goes. You're really good at it. Because here's why. Every last one of you wake up and you pray, do you not? <laughs> yeah. What is the purpose of praying if you don't believe the prayer worked? Right? Why pray? Yes. Yeah. Say that 
If you're going to pray, I got you, Lily. If you're going to say a prayer that is pointless, save that for your last breath that might be your last breath on earth. <laughs> yes, Lily. <laughs> The, yeah, the Buddhist way will be a lot of chanting. So it's repeating <clears throat> the prayers over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes, the, some, I remember there was a master that repeated, uh, that said that uh, maybe if you keep nagging at God, <laughs> he will <laughs> give you whatever you want. <laughs> and it's actually quite opposite. The more you nag God, think about it. How many times do you got to ask God for something? Once. One time. How many times have you asked God and asked God and asked God and asked God and asked God? Be honest, every last one of you. So some Christians might say, oh, well, she said Buddhist and they're doing chanting, but then look at all the chanting you did in your prayer. How many asking do you keep asking for when you only have to ask how many? When your child comes and asks you for something, how many times? They ask you one time. And then they're persistent about bugging you until they get a what? Answer. Mm -hmm. So when right. God don't answer you the way you want, you start nagging him. <laughs> bugging him. Acting as if that's going to make him move on your behalf. And he sits there and goes, you're in fear. Because I don't move in fear. Because that's anxiety. In other words, you're asking for a prayer from God and not believing that God is going to bless you with that prayer. So now you keep asking. Let me ask you all one question who's familiar with the Bible. How many times did Jesus ask for anything from the Father? One time. How did he ask? He always asked in what? Thanksgiving. Do you know the prayer that he said that he went to Lazarus' tomb? When he went to Lazarus' tomb, the very first thing he said was, Father, thank you for hearing me. Your prayer should be, Father, thank you for what? Hearing me. How many, you didn't think God heard you the first time you asked? <laughs> Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> but, but in reality, um, Melissa and myself, both of us, would kind of like, I think God will hear us. <laughs> we don't have to keep repeating and irritating so much. We have better things to do and we will move on. But there were people, you know, stuck at <laughs> nagging and nagging. But that's their problem. Yep. And we always get our things done. Absolutely. And let me say this. Every time you keep asking and asking and asking and asking, you, do, you know that you put yourself further in unbelief of getting that and i'm not saying this this is let me say this is fairness this is not for everybody some people can ask and ask and be so pinpoint focused that they'll get it but some people ask with a double mind because here's a great example let's say that all of a sudden someone wakes up and all of a sudden there's uh, symptoms of flu or sickness within the body and they all wake up and oh my god i got a fever 101 and temperature and all these aches and pains and they go to God oh God please take this pain and heal my body and thank you Jesus for healing my body and I plead the blood and then all of a sudden they leave the house or somebody calls them hey Joe how you doing oh I'm sick as a dog oh I feel horrible oh I got 102 fever are they telling them the facts yes is it the truth Not no the truth it's true to them because they're experiencing, yes. But is it a true to God? No. And this is where the separation has to go, where when you go to God and ask for healing, when somebody comes to ask you, what should your response be? I'm healed in the name of what? Exactly. Yeah. That should be your response. Not, oh, man, I got a fever. And, oh, I tossed and turned and I had a cold sweat and... Who want to hear that? Because guess what they're going to do? They're going to tell up. They're going. To, they're going to um. They're going to want up you. Oh, I remember when I got sick, boy. I whoo. I had hundred and four, man. And then we'll go to the other extreme. Then you're gonna get the one 
that's going to pray a whole hour for you and nothing wrong with a prayer, but does it take a whole hour to pray for your healing? <laughs> we have people, and I'm not saying I'm, we're, we're, we're being extreme when we say this, so don't, don't jump on me. We're trying to make a point. Does that make sense? All right, question number two. Who choose or who chooses the effects you experience? You do. But you know what most people will do? Blame other people. Yeah. But what most people do is when they pray that it doesn't happen, what is the normal response? Oh, it's not God's will. Oh, it's not God's timing. Oh, the devil came to steal it from me. How many, how many times have y'all heard that? Be honest. Yes, many times. How, how many of you, be honest, and you ain't got to say it out loud, but if you're honest, how many of you have said it yourselves? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we said it without knowledge of how the prayer works. Did we not? When we start practicing the five steps of the prayer, which is really, honestly, one step, <laughs> we just give you a process because that's how human brains work, right? So when we say, who chooses the effect you experience, you do, but here, here's the real, the real point we're trying to make. When you choose the effects, what are you choosing? The feelings. Go simple. You, how many feelings you got? The, the, the fear the love. or the love. Love and fear. Mm -hmm. So now, when you choose the effects you're experiencing, you're choosing what? Love or fear? Yes. What do I want to submit to? Do I want to submit to the ego, which is fear? Who is fighting for its life? Do you realize every time you get in fear, ego is fighting for its life? For survival because spirit wants to take over because there is something new or a breakthrough that is happening yeah. this is why most people stay poor this is why most people stay sick this is why most people don't advance to the next level of what they're asking for is because of the effects they've experienced here's a great example they've looked at the world and then tried to use the world as a baseline of how God loves. So now you have a vengeful God, an angry God, a loving God, a jealous God. Don't they sound like a human emotion? But yes, Lily. Yesterday we were saying that people would... Uh, attributes um, human characteristics mm -hmm. on God. Yes. We call it projection. They're projecting the role of father on how we would treat each other. Mm -hmm. But then people forget the verse that says in the Old Testament, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. In other words, you need to get your thoughts and your ways up to how I think. Because how you think of love is completely different of how I think of love. Mm -hmm. Woman gets punched in the face, or matter of fact, I'll flip it this time. Woman beat up her husband. <laughs> now, <laughs> he's ashamed to go tell the boys that he didn't got whooped by his girl. <laughs> and now he creates and conjures a story about getting beat up. Fear. But he calls that love because he stays in the relationship. Right? Mm -hmm. They confuse victimhood with love. They, yeah. con they confuse abuse with love. Mm -hmm. So now if we go a little bit away from the extreme and go to the to the norm, when you start judging things now. People start categorizing how judge how God would judge according to how they would judge. Because yes. now they become self-righteous. You ever, you ever met those folks that's holier than thou? And they couldn't do no wrong? And everything you did was a sin? Uh, yeah. 
Oh, I better punch. Matter of fact, I was one of them. <laughs> Mama tell you, shit, used to argue her down about the Church of Christ and how right and wrong they was. Fighting tooth, tooth and nail. Hang up the phone angry. No, no, no. You want to straight to hell. No, no, what you're talking about. Wrong is two left shoes, but this is what I was defending. This is what I call love, even though in my spirit, listen to this, even though in my spirit, it didn't set right. But because of tradition and going with the flow of everybody else, which is what most people do. So you get into the church house and everybody's amen, what you going to do? Amen with them. Well, he must be saying something right because everybody's agreeing. Everybody's saying amen. Mm -hmm. He must, and he's reading out of the holy book. So he must get it from God. He must be right. You see how easy that trap is? Yeah. And now I'm pitted against my family based on a on a on a on a, a belief that wasn't true. Didn't serve God, wasn't even nowhere close to God. Didn't even resemble God. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Question number three. How long does it take to create your experience you choose? Or you chose? Oh, this is too easy. Come on. There you go. Come on. Speed of thought. Speed of th Ask it is what? Ask it, it is what? Give it. How fast? Speed of thought. You have to catch up with what? The thought. God has already blessed you with it for all the promise of him is what? Yes in him what? Amen. God doesn't say no. It's on you on what you create. Let them what? Have dominion. It's on you. God is the observer. He's observing you. But he wants you to be a creator in the image and the likeness of him. He wants you to be a let there be. Not, oh, I hope, I hope it's gonna happen. If you if God would have said I hope this happened, you know we wouldn't be here. <laughs> just think about that. Yeah. If God had to, he just think about that. If he had that inkling, we would not be here. He'd still be wrestling with well, should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> no, I I know that Pastor Meek is gonna be over there lying. Should I create him or shouldn't I? <laughs> Thank God he does not think like we think. Amen. Amen. <laughs> or it takes speed of thought. So remember, the more you get in line with the Father, the faster things start manifesting for you. Certain things you really have to shift your focus on for it to manifest in. In other words, we'll give this example. Sometimes you have to get all your ducks in a row before that prayer can be answered. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a great example. Before Sister Meekins could come, I had to get me right with God. I had to love me and I had to love God before I could try to love her. Mm -hmm. Most people do the opposite where, oh, they fall in love. And they woo and oh, and we told you yesterday, as soon as you say, I love you, what do you want to hear back? I love you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't hear it, oh, they, they don't love me. And then when you do hear it, the other thought is, oh, they, I'm going to lose them. As mm -hmm. soon as that comes in, oh, I'm going to lose them. Now you, everybody, now everybody's jealous. Everybody want my man, everybody want my woman. He can't speak to nobody. She can't speak to nobody. Who's on your phone? Now they checking your phone. Oh, no, I love you. See how far? Now look at this love that we're talking about and look at, is this God's love? Far from who God is, isn't it? Because what that is displaying is what? Jealousy, fear, fear of loss, fear of not being loved, not realizing they are so much loved by the Father. Amen. Yes. And so are you. So, question number four. What is the point of this? <laughs> that you are, that, that, 
that we are responsible. <laughs> Hallelujah. You all are responsible for the thoughts you think. No outside entity, no one else, only you. So the whole thing is to take responsibility of what you created and what you attracted. And then whatever you attracted, you say, oh, this is bad. The first thing we tell you is don't judge it. The first thing we tell you is, or the second thing we tell you is, what are you learning from it? Are you there? Is, is that person there to teach you to learn how to be patient? How to learn to love more? How to learn to be firm in what you're believing? How to learn to be quiet? How to learn to listen? How to learn to observe? How to learn to walk away? Hallelujah. Some people don't know how to walk away. They... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they keep talking about. <laughs> talking about me. We'll walk away, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all seen it. Mm -hmm. So the point is so you can take responsibility of what you're creating with the Father. Because the Father does the what? Work. He takes all the pressure off of you so that your only experience that you choose once you're in alignment with him is love and every experience will be a loving experience and this is what you're wanting how many of you want to be loved everybody even that person who is resistant who you think hates you wants to be loved everybody wants to be everybody loves to be loved right yes let me tell you how much you love yourselves if i take a picture of each one of you who do you look for first uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> you look for self. Come on, tell me you. That's how you should love yourself, you, and rightfully so. You look for yourself to see what you look like. <laughs> then you look at everybody else to see. Oh man, they funny looking. Oh man, he bald. Oh, he's tall. Oh, he, all these little prejudgments you have. Uh, and then you and then you switch me. Go. Oh, I, I I love them. I love them. <laughs> All right. So the affirmation is, I am the creator of my experience, which is in truth, the reality. And we will say this on an added note. The experience that you're creating is also the experience that the father allowed you to go through so that you can learn and grow. It's for you to grow up and evolve. It's your faith to faith moment. Make sense? All right. You are the one who selects out what you're going to be aware of, what you're calling in into your lived experience. You select what is going to make an imprint upon you. So as soon as I came out the womb and someone went, boom, and I jumped, what happened to me for the rest of my life? Fear. So now every fearful thing scared me. And then they start telling the story. Oh, there's the boogeyman under the under the bed. If you don't eat your peas, something bad gonna happen to you. <laughs> the psyche. Or or the threat. You don't eat these peas, I'm gonna beat your butt. <laughs> now you now you you'd rather take the ghost now <laughs> <laughs> than the beating. You <clears throat> so imagine then a pool of clear still water. Into it, you drop a solitary pebble. From the pebble, there radiates wave. This is what is occurring constantly in the field of your wave of awareness. Every single time you take a pebble called a thought and throw it into your consciousness, this is the awareness where, oh, look over here. Oh, look over here. Oh, look over there. This is why your word says you can't serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. I'm going to give you an example. Give me a minute. I'm going to try to formulate it so y'all can catch this. I want you to imagine you taking your shoes off, taking your socks off, 
And I want you to picture yourself walking in the nicest, softest grass. All right, come back. What did everybody see? What did everybody experience? How many of you folk, how many of you focus on this lesson? Or how many of you focused on trying to walk in the grass? Walk in the grass? You, exactly. <laughs> you can't do you can't be trying to walk in the grass and read the image of the pool to the clear. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as you pray, your prayer should be pinpoint focus, and you only have to ask once. But here's how you should ask. Ask from a place of knowingness. Mm -hmm. Know that the Father has already blessed you with what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. If you ask for 11.5, you got 11.5. You just have to get into alignment with 11.5. Now, will 11.5 call come all at once? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes it has to teach you because sometimes you might be ignorant like I was with finances. Can't give me too much money. I'll spend it all or give it away. <laughs> come tell me a sob story. Oh, my bill got cut off and my kids didn't eat and it's snowing and they got the snowflakes and it's sunny outside and I fall for the story and here they go. Here, off with my money. We've all been there. Not all of us, but it's, it's that form of thinking where we don't get what we want because we can't handle it all. You know how many people have gotten millions off a lottery and then within five to seven years, they were back into poverty because they did not understand financial economics or they didn't understand finances. They didn't understand how to manage their money. They didn't understand it. So because they didn't understand it, they were unable to keep it, even though they what? Prayed for it. Did God answer the prayer for them? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay. As you have tracked it to yourselves, certain persons, places, things, objects, and above all, thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions, you have dropped them like little pebbles into the still clear pool of your vast and eternal awareness. Into your vast and eternal awareness. I want you to see how your, your mind is. Let me ask you a question. Is your brain and your mind the same thing? <laughs> Please say no. No. If, and if you say yes, I'm going to have to give you a quick biology lesson. Yes. <laughs> everybody, everybody understand that, right? Yes. Your brain is in your skull. Your mind is outside. That's your awareness. That's your consciousness. Yes. Just on a quick note. Okay. What you experience are the effects or the ripples of those pebbles. In other words, if you throw out a pebble of fear, what comes back to you? Fear. Yeah. Reap what you sow. Law of attraction. So if I wake up fearful, how many things am I going to be afraid of? How many fearful people are going to come and tell me their fearful story? How many fearful stories are we going to swap before each other? Now watch this. Let me add this in here. When two or three are gathered, and you're swapping fearful stories, what are you creating? You're creating that experience. Mm -hmm. And you're attracting yeah. all those fearful people. Now you got all these scared folks and now nothing can get done. They're stuck. Then after they realize that they're no longer in fear and they're still stuck, guess what they do? They remain stuck because they can't get unstuck because they're scared to do what? Move forward. Why do you think so many people stay in poverty? Why do you think so many people stay in relationships that don't serve them, that they know for a fact is not healthy for them? Make sense? Mm -hmm. They literally join with other ripples that you have created as these ripples move out and touch one another and come back to you 
This is the field of creation that makes up your physical third dimensional reality. In other words, when we say third dimensional reality, what are we talking about? I don't want to lose nobody. The master said in my father's house, there are many mansions. He was talking about dimensions. So when we talk about third dimension, what are we talking about? Where do you all live? What is this uh, planet called? What is it? The physical world, our, our world, our yeah. earth. Mm -hmm. Don't you all call it the 3D world? Yes. In this third dimensional earth? Mm -hmm. Okay. I ain't want to lose nobody. You are therefore never experiencing anything except what you have chosen to create through your selection of the pebbles that you have dropped into the field of your awareness. You literally never experience a solitary thing. You do not experience objects. What you experience is the effect of a thought or a belief in an object. You never experience another person for they also are made up of a whole web of what? Vibrations. You could say that each person, each object is really a field of relationships, unique and seemingly different from you, but a web of relationship nonetheless. So when we talk about this web of relationship, we're talking about that all of us are what? One. We're all connected. We're all brothers and sisters in the same family of God, are we not? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. So within this web of relationship, how many of you have seen a spider web? All of you, correct? Mm -hmm. Each spider web is unique, is it not? Yes. An original. Now, it is different from all the other ones, but is still a web, is it not? Yes. yes. Is it still strong enough to trap what it needs? Absolutely. Yeah. For what child can be separated from their parents, from their culture background, from the unique experience that they have had as they have interacted with the webs of relationship that have been around them since the moment of their conception? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. What kitten can be separated and singled out from the matrix of his mother and father? What leaf on a tree is separate from the temperature of the air, the quality of the water, and nutrients that come to it in the form of the very soil of the earth. Everything is a web of relationship. All webs are in relationship with all other webs and they become grander and grander and grander ad infinitum. In other words, those that you think that are narcissists and a resist, guess what? They're part of the web. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you had to cross them in the web through your journeys to do what? Learn to love them, to learn to do what? Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Make sense? Yes. Can someone read the next one, please? If you don't mind. You are a web. You are a web of relationships out of which you have selected certain pebbles whether they be thoughts or perceptions or experiences, and you have dropped them into the still clear pool of your awareness in order to create even more ripples. Mm. Then you have chosen which ones will have the greatest value for you. <laughs> Those, these you lock into your being and they became your emotional field. The emotional field is the first level of crystallization of the body. Absolutely. Everybody understand that? In other words, The process that you're all going through, and I gave you these dates, and I'm going to try to make it very simple, but the dates 2022 and 2024 that is coming, when the master came, Jesus, he showed you the crystalline body when he ascended after his 40 days. Do y'all understand that or no? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Yes. So this is the crystalline body that we also are going to experience. So in other words, this crystallization, we won't say, will it will, in a sense, I'm going to say this carefully, replace death. Because when you were created, were you created to die? No. Not no. the soul. No, not the soul. 
Not even your body. When the oh. first body was created, it was not intended to die. Mm -hmm. It was not until the, the mind shifted, then death came in. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. And then the master came in and said, what? I came to give you all what? Life. What type of life? Eternal life. life. Yes. From the emotional field, a further crystallization creates the appearance of a physical form called Sudi, Lily, Ann, Lewis, Donna, Anson, Teresa, Melissa, and everyone else. It is that which you push around the planet in your very temporary third dimensional form of attention. So now, have you ever heard the scripture that says you're in the earth, but not of the earth? You're just passing through? Yes. Well, let me ask you all a question. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> but think about that. If you're in the earth, but not of the earth, then where are you from? From heaven. From the Father. Everybody's from the Father. We all come mm -hmm. from one source and one source only. Mm -hmm. You might have experiences, but you still come from the one source, Father. Yes. Uh, while all around you and just beneath the level of your conscious daily awareness, you remain in communication with all webs of relationship, come suddenly to you and penetrate your daily awareness. And you wonder, where did that thought come from? You remember we asked this question yesterday and we called it revelation. This is the voice that you've learned to trust called God or Holy Spirit or Jesus or Buddha or whatever you have called it. You've learned to trust it, but at the end of the day, it's God. Great is he who is in you. Who is in you? God is in me. Who is directing my path? God. Why? Because I submitted my will to his will and his will to my will because we're one. Me and the father are what? One. One. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as long as I stay one with the father and he does the work, Man, all I got to do is keep creating and creating and creating and creating and blessing and blessing and saying, oh, this is the good, the holy and the what? The beautiful. All right. Come on now. Even that person who's doing cussing me out, here's the gift from God. Hallelujah. Thank you for cussing me out. I appreciate you. <laughs> Pastor, what? What, didn't he teach you seven, 70, to forgive 70 times 70? Yes. Didn't he teach you to love your neighbor? Mm -hmm. Didn't he teach you to love your enemy? Yes. So if, if that person who is cussing you out, what should you should be doing? I still love him. <laughs> I didn't make the rules up. I'm just... <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is. But think about how many people want to push that away instead of learning to love that situation. And we told you that when my brother went to the cross, he loved that soldier who was putting nails through his hands. He loved them. He could have stopped that process at any time he wanted, but he didn't. He chose that. Why? So that he can say what? Father, forgive him for they don't know what he do. And then to do what? Take the sting out of death. And then go through everything for you so you wouldn't have to do it. That's what salvation is. That's the atonement. He is in charge of the atonement. Everybody understand? Yes. I almost ran up out of here, boy. That's some good stuff there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Or suddenly a picture appears in your mind, and we gave you walking through the grass. Mm -hmm. It could be of anything, a man and a woman making love, a man and a man making, ooh, pastor, that's nasty. Get over and stop judging them people. They're there to teach you something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What about Solomon? Oh, okay, what about Jesus? He forgave everybody, didn't he? Yes. He didn't condemn not one person. Not the woman at the well. Not the woman who committed adultery. Not none of them. Father, mm -hmm. forgive them all, for they don't know what they're doing. They forgot who they are. Yes. They forgot your love. They forgot your compassion. 
They forgot your forgiveness. Oh man, boy, don't don't get me on a roll. Mm -hmm. The love of a child playing in the park, a dolphin, or a picture of conflict of war. Where did it come from? Because you live in a perfect communion and you are like a grand field of energy in which all webs of relationship are reverberating constantly. You actually have access to the complete entirety of creation. Let them have dominion over what? Over What's the key word? Some? A few? No. Everything. No, some things. Oh, couple of things. Oh, oh. <laughs> couple of things. A tiny few crumbs of things. Everybody say it together. All oh, things. All oh, things. things. Let me add on to it. Because you are a beloved holy child and you are a kingdom citizen and you are in the kingdom of God, this is why. This is the love of God. Every room in the kingdom of God has your name on it. Every room has every treasure and every blessing that you've ever wanted. Every room is a love room. Glory to God. All right. Uh, and this entirety of creation is not limited to what is occurring right now. Pastor, they're fighting over here in the United States about this, this impeachment with this former president and this current president and then we got the virus and oh my luck. Where are we now with God? Is anything too hard for God? Yeah. When do we start praying that prayer? Oh, don't get me started. That's another. And this <laughs> entire, <laughs> as you understand time, you, you have available, you have available to yourself everything. Because you are in alignment with the Father is why you have everything which you could call your past and your future. It is better stated this way. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So now where are you right now with your faith? You're either in love or you're in what? Fear. Because these are the only places you're going to create. These things are available to you all the time. There is not one of you has who has not experienced this for yourself. Perhaps you suddenly thought of a friend and then the telephone ring or then the text ring or the email or you bumped into. Matter of fact, interesting that I'm teaching this and I love the Holy Spirit for it because they, they, they got jokes too. But I was thinking of an old co-worker when I was in the Navy, when I was going to the base and I was thinking, man, I wonder how Jerry's doing. And I kid you not, me and my friend was in the commissary that day and I saw Jerry and he comes through there and he had his mask on and I knew the eyes and I went, Jerry! And he went, Nikes! <laughs> Couldn't make this up. <laughs> These things happen all the time because we're what? One. I thought of him. He, now watch this. He might not even thought of me. In fairness. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or in fairness, he might have thought of me. Hey, I wonder how, it might even been, hey, I wonder how Meekins is doing or how that guy is doing or whatever. And then here we are. And then there's the holy relationship because now this is the gift from God. Here's the answered prayer. Well, prayer, well, pastor, you didn't say heavenly father in thy name you just thought of him, and there it is. Boom. Mm -hmm. Ask, and it's what? Given. Given. And I rejoice in seeing Jerry. Thank you, Father, for letting me have that experience. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Thank you for letting me see Jerry. Thank you that Jerry is well-being and saw his lovely wife, and they were, you, thank you for that. And Jerry could have been dead and gone. Amen? Amen. Uh, it makes no sense in your casual third dimensional plane because when you ask people, how do you know what's their response? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they have no answer for that because guess what? 
Faith doesn't make sense. Faith is not designed to make sense. Faith is designed to make more faith. Okay. <clears throat> Even though your conscious mind was very busy making breakfast and wondering about which stocks to buy and sell or which perfume to put on the body, you remain in perfect communion. It is why when there is a deep resonance between friends separated by thousands of miles and all of a sudden you know they need you to call them. You've all had that, right? Mm -hmm. And they pick up and all of a sudden you become the teacher, you become the healer, you become the physician, you become the therapist, you become the punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> You feel a sense of concern. Maybe they just stubbed their toe, but you picked up the vibration. You all live this. You all know this. There's no secret about it. What I would see then to attract your attention to one of these pebbles or one of the pebbles that has been dropped into the field of awareness, which is generally true for virtually everyone involved in the third dimensional experience called physicality. Imagine a sentence being dropped from a vast height, picking up speed until it strikes the still pool of your awareness and sends a ripple out, creating a vibration through you. The, sim the sentence is simply this. It is not possible for me to have complete mastery over which pebble are dropped into my awareness for I am, the, I am at the mercy of the vibrational field set up yes. by the ripple of all the thoughts webbed in relationship in which I swim constantly. I know that's a mouthful, but we'll say it in short term. It is not possible for me to get a, a million dollars. It's not possible for me to get into a healthy relationship. It's not possible for me to have a whole healthy body. We ain't talking about y'all, but look at the people that come to us that make these statements that they consider real and truth. Your job is not to let them go into the low vibration, but to bring up to the high vibration. Your job is to lift them up to God. Why are you there? You're the love and the light. When they see you, when they see you, they see God. I hope y'all got that. <laughs> that perception is absolutely true. As long as you choose to believe it, that perception or belief is absolutely laughable and powerless as soon as you choose to acknowledge that this is so. What is the point of that? It is simply this. Glad you asked. <laughs> if you would choose to awaken wholly, if you would choose not to just be a wave that has mysteriously arisen from the mind of God and is somehow crashing about through the universe, it is absolutely necessary to own as your own the pebble that drops into the still clear pool of your awareness with the thought, I am the one who chooses the effects I experience. I am the one who chooses the effects I experience. I alone interpret all neutral relationships or experiences. I alone interpret all neutral relationships or experiences. Everybody understand what that means? If you don't, say so now. Yes. Okay. Got it. I alone place the value upon objects, things, thoughts, and belief systems. I alone place the value upon objects, things, thoughts, and belief systems. I alone am literal creator of my moment to moment experience. This as you can see, changes everything. Never again can you allow yourself to feel as though you, were, you are merely a victim of unconscious forces. Never again can you look out beyond yourself and find fault with another. Never again can the energy of blame be projected from you to be dumped upon your brother or sister or another object. 
Never again can the energy of judgment hold sway in your holy mind. This thought, this one singular pebble dropped into the still pool of your awareness is absolutely essential if you would decide to awaken holy. And that is what this course was about. We thank you for following us and share this important lesson. And we love you. We adore you. Amen. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. We all made it through this thing. So our next lesson will be, and I changed it. It was a course in miracles, but I, I changed it to a course in creation. I think I like that better because the reason why I changed it and I asked the Holy Spirit is you all are already miracle minded. So there's no really need to teach you about miracles. It's more need to teach you about the process of the creation of how the miracle happens. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we just changed it to a course in creating or a course in creation. Because when there is a let there be, you are being as you were created to be. Creator, creation. You're in the image and the likeness of the what? Father. To do what? Create. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. So be deliberate creators and bless all that you create so as we shift into creation we're going to get way deep and we would also encourage you all if you choose to also go back to this teaching of mastery christ consciousness there's so much information and knowledge and love within this that often you should go back and and you don't have to read the whole thing but just Skim through with the Holy, hey, let me go pick this out or let me go search this up because there is a search button on this Word document. Mm -hmm. And if you type up um, love, uh, hate, anger, it will take you to that section. If you put it in consciousness, it will it will bring you to that, that section on your Word document. Mm -hmm. So it will make it very easy instead of going through 102 or eight, 802 pages. <laughs> you can just do the search and go straight to find that, that item, okay? So I'm excited about our, our progress. So congratulations to each and every one of you. All right, so any questions, comments, concerns? Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay! I am happy for you all. You guys did good. Good, good, good. <laughs> all right. Let us pray out. Who wants to pray us? Everybody should. This is what we're going to do tonight. Thank you, Father. You're so, you're so wonderful. I love him. God. We're all going to pray together at the same time. So take every, everybody, unmute, your, unmute your, uh, your phones. I don't care where you're at. I don't care how noisy it is. We're all going to pray at the exact same time. And whoever is the last one to pray, say amen or however you close. And that's how we're going to close. Fair enough? Yes. Trust me, God could hear all of us. He, you know, maybe what we hear today. <laughs> so unmute your, unmute your. Let me, let me unmute, unmute, unmute. Let me get unmute, unmute. There you go. On the, on the count of three, one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the good, you for the good, and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Operating and operating in love and not fear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Wasn't that good? <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you all. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we pray that you all have a blessed evening. And if you're able to attend next week, please do. And if you have any questions, anything at all, please email me, text me, call me. I am available to you. And always remember the Holy Spirit is your comforter and your teacher. So always, always go to the Holy Spirit for anything, anything, anything. We love you all. Have a blessed evening, y'all. Love everybody. Love, love you all. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all again.